results when a problem. This is Mark Hatfield, governor of the state of Oregon. I have been asked, here we are on the Pacific coast. We have just finished celebrating our 100th year as a state, symbolizing the farthest reach of our nation. The very word Oregon evokes images of Western movement, frontier, land's end. Now it seems produced is entitled, Journey to the Center of the United States, referring to the new center which has been scientifically located in the northeast corner of Oregon. When Alaska and Hawaii joined the Union, the old geographic center was shifted to the northwest. We are very happy to have the center of the 50 United States within our boundaries, and it should give us all a new perspective on our growing nation. But I am not sure it adds anything to the image of Oregon as the frontier, as the land of the West. The people of Northeast Oregon must have had the same feeling for their journey to the center of the U.S. pokes some good-natured fun at journeying to the center of things. You might even see some semblance to Jules Verne's journey to the center of the earth. They are both unlikely stories. After you get to our center, however, you will see what the land is really like. This will amaze you even more than any fantasy. I know you will enjoy making this journey. Be prepared to have fun. Four counties make up the northeast corner of Oregon. It is a land of many faces, a land of many traditions. One of them is cowboys. It is here that the real West begins. It is where it begins if you view it from the shores of the Pacific. If you're in Portland, you have to go east to get into the West. Into the West of wide open spaces, cow ponies, tall mountains, shorthorns, white faces. Everywhere you go, you'll find cattle spreads and wranglers at work. The Mexican fence pliers have replaced the six gun. The Jeep stands in for the horse. But not always. You'll still find them sitting tall and easy in the saddle. Day in, day out, summer and winter, this is the land of the working cowboy. As real as the land he is a part of. Real as the traditions behind him. The towns. Many of them got their start as cow towns. They grew up as cow towns. And they're still cow towns. Sometimes the cows take over the town. Now don't get me wrong. Not everyone around here is a cowboy. There are even some who don't like the critters. Well, this is the beauty of Northeast Oregon. Out here, there are ways and places to get away from it all. Way away. You can set yourself up a camp in Hell's Canyon, and there will be no noise to disturb you except the fish chewing on your hooks. Hooking into a fighter like this is good for the soul. In the high country, there is hunting. In the rolling country, there are birds. The land has much to offer for those who want to get out into it. When winter comes, the whole landscape changes. The air seems even clearer and cleaner. And the snow is awfully inviting. Inviting to the whole family. And within easy access by family car, are the Anthony Lakes and Tollgate ski areas, where you'll find skiing as it should be. In fact, the family car 
is the key to many forms of pleasure in northeast oregon each turn in the road presents a new vista a new horizon there are over a dozen state parks and wayside stops each one is cool and green with plenty of space to pitch a camp and live the leisurely rhythm of the land you can live off the land too they're fish in the stream and homegrown watermelons for old-fashioned family picnics each road each park has a quality of its own has its own form of fun the back roads have a quality too they beckon the curious and adventurous the land has many stories to tell it can tell of the old stump dodger the narrow gauge line between baker and sumter mile upon mile of gravel on the valley floor contains a story too it tells of this monster which chewed the valley up and spewed out thirty million dollars worth of gold for you're in gold country now and the roads lead to abandoned mines and ghost towns or the near ghost towns where there is still a faint glimmer of life there is still gold in this country as the old timers say more in the hills than ever has been taken out most of it is sought by the weekend miner who plays the game for the quest not the dust the rules and tools are still the same placer sluice box shovel and the old standby the pan if you stand too close to them you're liable to get bitten by the same bug you might even strike it rich Meanwhile, back at the ranch, there are some varmints on their way to head them off at the pass. They plan to hole up at the Bar M, Red's Place, Boulder Park, Arrowhead, or any one of the many guest ranches in the area. These are the spots to let time catch up with you, to soak up some sun, to give free rein to the kids. Let them find out what cowboying is with the seat of their pants rather than their eyeballs. There are horses for all of them. Gentle horses and gentle slopes. Pretty soon the whole family will be in the saddle taking the measure of the land. Above all, this is rodeo country. Rodeo at its best, world famous rodeo. The Pendleton Roundup. And the small rodeos at Elgin, Baker, Union, Halfway, and the Chief Joseph Days. All have that real Western flavor that can't be imitated or staged. It seems like every critter that gets into the arena just doesn't want to be ridden. Rodeo is many things. It's pageantry, it's spectacle, it's tradition. Rodeo is a sport, the third largest attended in the nation. Aficionados know that that was a hulahan. A first time rodeo fan can tell you that was a miss. Brahma bulls. They're from India, but the rider is strictly American. Some might be reminded of a Sunday afternoon in a Spanish arena, but not for long. Rodeo is a contest, a contest of skill, a contest of time, a contest of muscles. It's a way of proving the axiom, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Sometimes it's kind of hard to prove. Rodeo has its roots in the working ranch. Roping doggies is part of the scheme of things out here. People who live on ranches learn to do this. Learn to train their own horse. 
same horse same girl now she is queen of the roundup because roundup springs from a community out in the real west four counties make up the northeast corner of oregon it is a land of many faces a land of many traditions one of them is indians indians are there there in person in all their regalia and splendor they are there in subtler ways too like in the names on the land umatilla walawa imnaha looking glass joseph wild horses in the meadows and hills speak of indians too in their veins run the strains of the Appaloose, the Cayuse. These were the ponies of the Nez Perce, the ones that took them across the shining mountains into Buffalo country. Thousands of Indians and horses would rendezvous in the old Oregon country. It was a sight to behold. Today they still rendezvous in the Oregon country, in the state of Oregon, in its northeast corner, they are there on horses in their traditional costumes. They are there as a living memory. A memory of a way of life that is not forgotten, that can be shared by all. Key to this way of life is a love of the land, a belief that spirits dwell in the mountains, a belief that these spirits can be sought out in a personal quest, that they can be made friendly and protective. Spirits dwell in the lakes, too. Anyone who crosses their remote beauty is following an Indian path. This is the Indian way. It matters not if the face is pale, the canoe a surplus raft. Fishing is Indian business, and there is a little bit of Indian in all of us. Northeast Oregon is a land in which it can grow, the woods are full of spirits. The woods are full of game. They beckon to those who will quest for them. They will lead them into the high country, into the mountains. It is a good quest. There is an old Indian saying, one shot, meat. Two shots, maybe. Two shots, two deer, heap good. There are many ways to note the passage of time, by a calendar or by the color of the land, the tingle of the air, or by what birds are on the wing. Hunting is Indian business, and there is a little bit of Indian in all of us, something that lets us find beauty in the land, find pleasure in its rhythm. The rhythm of the land presents an ever-changing picture. With winter, the land, if possible, is even more beautiful. The high country beckons only the few. Indeed, there are few Indians who would answer this call. But there is a little bit of Hillary and Tenzing in all of us. Enough to let us know what it feels like to be on the top of the world. Many of us know the pleasures of a downhill run like this, the feel of dry powder snow. And if winter comes, can spring be far away? Can the snow on the mountains withstand the bursting of the blossoms? The warm breath of the Chinook that turns the hills green again now the signs point the way to another top of the world for the little bit of Hillary and Tenzing in all of us. Hat Point is accessible by car. It is a prodigious drive. There are no easy paths to a top of a world. This one is unique, for from here you can look into the bottom of the world, too. You can look into Hell's Canyon, the deepest, most fabulous canyon in the world. A canyon of mystery, inscribed with markings from a distant past, echoing 
with distant sounds, which today are the sounds of outboard motors. A family boat has conquered one of the most feared rivers in the world, completely conquered it, made it Sunday outings safe. Picnics are great, but here are the boats, and here is the river, and now let's have some fun. There are other new sounds on the river. There are other ways to tame the wild and turbulent snake. It is being quieted at Oxbow and at Brownlee. And behind the dams are the reservoirs. Mile upon mile of placid river beckoning the water skier, the fisherman, the tourist, and where you ask in this contemporary scene are the Indians. They're here, keeping up with it all, taking it all in their stride. In fact, maybe a little bit ahead of some of us. Northeast Oregon is a land of many faces. New shapes appear in ancient riverbeds. New names on the map. McNary Dam is one. But the old landmarks endure. Hat Rock still looks like a hat. But there is a yacht club here where there was only sand and driftwood before. The tradition of friendship runs deep out here. The natives, be they cowboy or Indian, are friendly and helpful. It's hard to get lost in this country. Northeast Oregon is indeed one of many faces. You can buy a railroad ticket from La Grande to Enterprise. This ticket will entitle you to ride in the caboose of a freight train. Here is another route to adventure in Northeast Oregon. It isn't exactly the accommodations of the dome liner, but the view is just as good. In fact, it's a little better because of the leisureliness of the pace. You will follow the Grand Ronde River, which was General Howard's route of march on the Nez Perce. His march on Joseph and Looking Glass. The schedule reads, leave Le Grand, 9 a.m., arrive Enterprise, 1 p.m. It is now 5 p.m. The conductor expects to be in Enterprise about 11 p.m. tonight. If schedules are important, this isn't the trip for you. But if you like the unusual, if you like good companionship, buy a ticket to Enterprise. Here's the way to see the country Here's the way to see Northeast Oregon, a way to get on top of it and see it all in one big look. In 45 minutes, charter pilots in light planes can take you anytime, any place you want to go in Northeast Oregon. This is a pretty remarkable feat. Northeast Oregon is larger than the country of Belgium, just a bit smaller than Switzerland. The Wallawas have been called the Switzerland of America, and from the air, you can see why. And if you wish, your pilot can set you down in a remote landing strip hidden in a valley. Set you down at a guest ranch, which is accessible only by airplane or by pack horse. By air, you are five minutes away from the center of the United States. No electricity here, no television, but this rugged elegance contains the essence of America and its frontier as symbolized by Reds, Levi's, and Stetson, and by the wings that brought you here. Back on Earth again, most roads lead to the center of the United States, lead to Northeast Oregon, whether you come from the east or the west, north or south. 395 is the north-south route, US 30 or 80N is the east-west route. But no matter what road you take, you will be following the Oregon Trail, the trail of adventure the Trail of Discovery.
you have seen the center you have seen the land you know how to get there i now would like to cordially invite you to make your own personal journey to the center of the united states then visit the rest of oregon you may never want to leave